So this morning we are at Oakland Cemetery, founded in Atlanta in 1850. The gate that you see was built in 1896. As we walk into the cemetery, we're walking into the original six acres. Before it was a cemetery, it was a family farm. It's right at daybreak, so the lighting might not be too good, but one of my favorite points of interest in this cemetery is right as you come in on the right, this mausoleum houses a man that was from Walton County, which is where I'm from. As the story goes, he did not like ties. And when they first carved this statue, it had a tie carved into it, and he refused the statue until they removed the tie. Inside the mausoleum, as the story goes, which you'll hear me say a couple times in this video, which is what they say at Oakland, as to not sound too authoritative on history. As the story goes, this coffin has a window on it, and he is buried with a tie on. The next point of interest is Martha Lumpkin Compton. Atlanta used to be called Terminus, and then Marthasville, and then Atlanta. And this is the woman that Marthasville was named after. One of the first burials at Oakland Cemetery was this man here, buried in 1850. He blew into town on a Shriners convention and died. And as the story goes, at the graveside, they slit his throat to make sure that he was dead before he was buried. Back then, there was a fear of being buried alive. Oakland Cemetery is a Victorian garden cemetery modeled after Mount Auburn Cemetery up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. When I went to Mount Auburn, I noticed there was a lot of pathways through the cemetery. It was a really pretty cemetery to walk through. Whereas here at Oakland, there's a lot of family plots, which is typical of a southern cemetery. Nonetheless, there's always something in bloom here at Oakland Cemetery. We're still here in the original six acres, and this here is the North Public Burial Grounds. Before Oakland expanded, this field here is where you would be buried if you were poor or you blew into town and died. While it looks like a field, it is covered in graves. Oakland Cemetery does a lot of events here, and this is where they'll have the pumpkin patch or they'll set up a stage. There's a larger pauper's burial ground that we will walk to in a little bit. Within the North Public Burial Grounds is the burial of Maynard Jackson. He was a mayor of Atlanta and is half of the name of the airport here in Atlanta. His grave is at a 45 degree angle so that if he sits up, he can overlook the city of Atlanta. And before they built that building, you could see the city of Atlanta from here. Here's the grave of Margaret Mitchell. She wrote Gone with the Wind. Margaret Mitchell was hit by a car on Peachtree Street and died in the hospital a couple days later. This is a beautiful monument here on the northwestern side of the cemetery. I really love the relief of this monument. This lamb's grave here is the grave of a mockingbird. It's one of the only animals that's known about that's buried here in Oakland Cemetery. The Mockingbird was buried in 1874. If I were laid to rest here, I too would love to be buried with my animals. I've always sort of been drawn to this plot here. It's just really dense with some pretty monuments. I know on the main tour, they always point out this monument here because of all the symbolism. I can never remember. You got an anchor, a cross. I'm also pretty sure this was the monument that was damaged when the tornado blew through Oakland. But I've been trying to see if I could see the cracks on it, and I cannot find it, so I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure I've stood here and listened to a tour guide talk about how this one was damaged. Looking inside this mausoleum, we get to see the beautiful stained glass. Once a year, Oakland Cemetery has an event called Sunday in the Park, the last Sunday in September, and they open up some of the mausoleums and you can walk into them. Oakland Cemetery is in the midst of repaving the cemetery, so all the roads have been torn up, and it's dirt roads, which I think is really cool. It's kind of like how the cemetery used to be. We're standing here. Marta! We're standing here at the Richards Mausoleum. If you come to Oakland Cemetery, more than likely you want to take a photo of this one here. At the top of the mausoleum, there are some grotesques. Oftentimes people will call these gargoyles, but they are called grotesques because they don't serve the architectural purpose of moving the water off of the roof. So they're not gargoyles, they're grotesques. 
Back near the wall on the north central side of Oakland Cemetery is a headless statue, which are one of my favorite monuments to find in a cemetery. It's been described to me that the reason the head likes to pop off of statues is because that's one of the weak points of the statue. There's all sorts of beautiful epitaphs throughout this cemetery as well. You can pause the video to read this one. It's another one of my favorite monuments inside Oakland Cemetery. I just really love the carving. This is one reason to come to a cemetery nice and early as that sun starts to cast over the graves. It's just really pretty. There's the bell tower in the distance. Since Oakland Cemetery was a Victorian garden cemetery, every good garden needs a greenhouse for the winter. Right here to the left, what we're coming up on is the original plot for the greenhouse. It's not the original greenhouse. To the left of it is the original boiler room where they got the heat for the winter. So this greenhouse was originally at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens and when they wanted a new greenhouse, it was discovered that this greenhouse fits inside of the footprint of the original greenhouse at Oakland Cemetery. And so now Oakland gets to continue to use Use this greenhouse for all of its plant life. Oakland likes to pick the flowers from the cemetery and continue to grow those same flowers. They try not to go get new plantings from elsewhere. They try to recycle the plants that are already within the cemetery. So a lot of the plant life you'll see in the cemetery is potentially the original flowers that were growing back in the 1800s or the original plant, you know, not the original flowers. You get it. And to the right of the greenhouse is the carriage house. Back before cars, you had to use a horse to get around. Every time I come here, I like to pick a flower and wear it. A mark of a good cemetery is there's always something in bloom. Back behind the greenhouse, you'll see all the plants that they've got out. We haven't had the first freeze of the year, so not necessarily using the greenhouse to its full potential, because we don't need to. This is the African-American section of Oakland Cemetery. The African-American section is one of the first sections to get a lot of the preservation work that Oakland Cemetery does. And they've got a whole team of people that go around and reset monuments, fix pathways, and just a general beautification effort. And they do a really good job. This woman here did a lot of work with orphanages and foster children. Her monument has an elephant on it, and elephants are known to take in baby elephants when their parents die. I think it's another really beautiful monument here in Oakland Cemetery. Coming up on the left is the Men's Comfort Station. When it's the mid to late 1800s and you want to come visit family or y'all are doing a picnic in the cemetery, at some point you're probably going to need to use the bathroom. And so Oakland Cemetery had bathrooms. And they haven't done much in the way with this men's comfort station, but the women's comfort station has been renovated. And we can walk over there and check that out. As the sun just starts to come above the trees now, we are in the northeast side of the cemetery. After the cemetery expanded in the 1870s, this large field here is where the Poppers burial ground was. And so while it looks like a large empty field, it is full of graves. Before they added in the east gate for pedestrians, if you lived in Cabbage Town and you wanted to come into the cemetery, you used to hop over the wall back here. I apologize if my history is a little bit janky. I've got a tour manual here, but I've opted not to use it. I find it much more fun to go off the dome and go what I can remember, and I never like to be too exact in my history. Oakland Cemetery is still an active cemetery. They have about 10 to 12 burials a year. And this is one of the newer monuments that I've noticed in my time here at Oakland Cemetery. And I really love the owl. And yet again, as we walk around early this morning, as that sun starts to rise, it's just a really, really beautiful place to be here in the middle of Atlanta. Here's one of the examples of the white bronze monuments. These are actually metal monuments. And every time I find one in a cemetery, I like to walk up to them and knock on them. Here's one of just many examples of how there's always something in bloom here at Oakland Cemetery. So we're here at the very southeastern corner of the cemetery at Memorial and Boulevard. And as I mentioned previously, this is that gate that they installed a couple years ago. So no longer do you have to hop the wall to get into the cemetery. You just walk down to the corner here and come in the gate. These two monuments here are an example of death masks. There's a specific word for it, but I can't think of it. But basically, they took a plaster mold of these children's faces when they died, and that's what they used to make the carving. They were buried in 1881, so you've got about 150 years of weathering on this. Nonetheless, these are the death masks of these children. 
that the sculptor used to carve their faces. This is another one of the newer mausoleums that's been installed since I started volunteering here. I really love the quotes that they have on the side. It always bothers me when people leave the gates open. It's like I'm afraid they're going to get out or something. I've been coming to Oakland Cemetery for almost a decade now volunteering and without fail every time I come here I see something I've never seen before. Here we have another example of a headless statue. Again one of my favorite types of monuments. How neat is that? And then right as I wrapped up that last shot I noticed this carving right behind that headless statue. This is another thing I've never seen at Oakland before. With 70,000 burials in this cemetery you're bound to find something new every time you come. This here is the Jacobs Mausoleum. This is the man that owned the farm that the first coca-cola was served in. If you want to go to the guy that invented the recipe for coca-cola you got to go down to Columbus, Georgia. But since coke is from Atlanta we like to cling to anything that's closely tied to it so all we have here at Oakland is the guy that owned the pharmacy. This is probably one of my favorite sections of Oakland Cemetery. This is the Ahavatha King section here in the Jewish Flats. This is a Jewish section of the cemetery. And this is specifically the Ahavath Akim congregation. What I love about this section is how large the stones are and how close they are together. You can walk through these stones and it's almost like a maze or you're just really amongst it all. We'll walk through the middle of the graves here so you can kind of get a feel for it. But I just really love just how dense everything is. They're just one after another. This section's probably full, but I can only imagine doing a funeral in the middle of this. Butterdish steel vaults only. This statue here is my favorite example of a headless statue. Probably one of the statues that led to the reason why I love headless statues. We're here in Jewish flats. I just think it's a really beautiful carving. And so we'd seen the men's comfort station, and this is the women's comfort station that they renovated. You can see the four ladies sign here. They tried to be as accurate as possible with this renovation. They were able to find the original tile work and they mimicked that very well inside. It's locked up right now, but they'll open it for special events to where you can see the inside. This is the large Confederate dead section that is at Oakland Cemetery. There are 16 Union dead that are buried here. The reason there's such a large burial section here is if it was Civil War times and you were here at Oakland, where that tall building is in the background there, that's Memorial Drive, it used to be called Fair Street. And there was a lot of hospitals all up and down Fair Street. And when the soldiers would die, they'd bring them across the street to Oakland. And thus you have such a large Confederate dead section here. Going down the road here are those 16 Union dead. And they're kind of intermixed. One way to determine whether it's a Union or a Confederate burial is the Union graves are rounded at the top and the Confederate graves are pointed. One of the newer monuments here at Oakland is Kenny Rogers, who was buried in 2020, I believe. And he really went all out. I think it's a really beautiful monument. I've heard some people talk about how it doesn't really blend in with the rest of the cemetery. I tend to hold my opinions on it just because I really appreciate that there's people out there that are still making large, beautiful funerary monuments. So I'll take what I can get. There's a couple more things I want to film here, but it is now my time to go volunteer at the visitor's center. I've been doing it for about a decade now. And so we'll come back out to the cemetery after, but the light's going to be totally different. Sun's going to be high in the sky, but I can show you some things in the visitor center that make visiting Oakland Cemetery really cool. This is the visitor center in Oakland Cemetery. It's got a lot of really cool cemetery related gifts and books. The man that organizes this gift shop does a really, really good job. There's all sorts of tarot cards and special topic books, history books, Oakland Cemetery merch. There's a guy here at Oakland Cemetery that takes all the fallen trees and makes things out of the branches. So little keychains, kaleidoscopes, letter openers. It's really cool. One of my favorite things about volunteering here at Oakland Cemetery is sometimes people will come in and want to know where someone's buried. And we've got this huge map here with all the plots marked. And then we have a couple folders here of all the burials sorted by last name. 
So we are back in the cemetery. It is early afternoon and I'm working my way back to where I left off, but right here I'm passing one of the carriage steps. So back before the cemetery was paved and there was a dirt road and you came up to your plot on horse and buggy, they had some steps at this plot so you didn't have to step into the mud. This is the grave of Samuel Allen Massel Jr. He used to be a mayor of Atlanta. And on this plot, before Five Points Marta Station was built, there was an old train station. And this is one of the peaks of that building before it was torn down, it was saved. And he has it set on his monument. Another grave close by that a lot of people come and ask about is Bobby Jones. There's a bunch of golf balls on his grave. Every once in a while, the cemetery will come out and clear them out. And he is buried right here next to Memorial Drive. Here are the corner in the original six acres of Oakland Cemetery. This is an old hitching post back when they had horses to get around. And back there behind it is that carriage step. So we're coming up on the area of the cemetery known as Bell Tower Ridge. To the left, this is the Ostel Mausoleum. It's the most expensive mausoleum in the cemetery. When they host Sunday in the park, they often open this mausoleum and there's a fortune teller that sits inside. Always love these really huge vases here. You can see the light that they've got set up. They're doing the Capturing the Spirit of Oakland tours this October that they do every year. It's a really popular event. Nonetheless, you'll have power cords and string lights running throughout the cemetery. Also just behind these urns is a gazebo. This gazebo was originally at the family's home and was moved here when some of the family members died. This structure here is the bell tower. It was built in the 1890s and was originally home to the sexton. There's of course a bell tower. This is also where the visitor center used to be and they have now moved it outside and they're building a new visitor center. They've renovated this and it's now an event space. So we're here in the basement of the bell tower or the cellar or I don't know, the lower level. And this used to be a holding vault. So if it was winter time or they were waiting for family to get in town, they would bring your body here and store it here until it was time for burial. This monument here is modeled after their home. It's got the four front columns, the front door and the window above it. Here's a closer shot of those carvings with the window and the front door. Because of the special event, they've got all sorts of shit set up around this. But this fountain here was originally where all those stones are. And because the fountain kept getting hit by cars, they moved it back. And there's a plaque there that describes that, but there's a lot of stuff in the way. Right in front of the bell tower, Oakland Cemetery does have a Tiffany window. If you really want to see a cool place with some Tiffany stained glass, check out Blanford Church Cemetery in Petersburg, Virginia. Every window in the church is a Tiffany stained glass. I really like this monument here with the horse and the injured warrior on top. It says the end of the trail under it. This is another monument that I really, really love. With a crow or I don't know what, but you can see there's some really cool items that have been left. This is another newer mausoleum that was installed, the Harris Mausoleum. Something I always make a point of telling people to go check out because you got to look inside. As the story goes, that table is their original table that's bronzed. And I always like to riff that. Unfortunately, they didn't bronze the bodies. But that is a couple that is playing cards. Apparently the wife had dementia and her memory was always best when her and her husband were playing cards. So that is memorialized here in this sculpture. This here is the Neil Monument. It is rich with symbolism. The symbol that always stands out most to me is it's a mother and daughter, and the mother is holding a Bible, opened and facing away from her. The daughter died young, 25 or so, I believe, and the mother died five years later. And just something really beautiful about this monument here is all the flowers in bloom around the graves. That's something Oakland is really good at, is really having some beautiful plant life amongst the graves. I'll leave y'all with this parting shot here at the crest of Bell Tower Ridge. You can see the city of Atlanta in the background. Hope I did Oakland Cemetery some measure of justice with this video. And I'm sure I'll remake it one day. But I came out here this weekend and figured I'd film something.